Inspired by the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM, and her passion to help others, Daniela's robotic innovations have received distinguished recognition. Steve! Steve! There you are, Steve. Hey, everyone, meet Steve. Steve, everyone. And my friend Brian, thank you for assisting with my demonstration. Well, this is Steve. Steve is one of the first robots of many that I have built. But Steve is very special because he's controlled with your brain. Brian is wearing an electroencephalogram. An electroencephalogram, or EEG, detects electrical activity in your brain using small flat metal discs called electrodes attached to your scalp. So right now, this wireless headset is capturing his brain waves real time and controlling the robot with his mind. I'd like to begin by telling you who inspired me to build Steve, my mom. On the outside, she looks absolutely wonderful, but the inside tells us a very different story. About 17 years ago, my mom was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. It is an illness that affects the brain and the spinal cord, in turn infecting one's motor skills. I have grown up with her as she has struggled with this illness, helping her get around and picking her up when she falls. She fights her body every day. These experiences have humbled me and my family. They are a constant reminder to enjoy all the great days and persevere through the not so great ones. This is where my robotics journey begins. In sixth grade, I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to attend a VEX robotics summer camp, which is an educational robotics program. At this point, I had never been introduced to a real robotics program, so I was so excited to build and program a robot. I mean, how cool is that? Robots are the future. Fast forward to seventh grade, I participated in my school's science fair. The topic in seventh grade was the human body. It was an opportunity for me to express my passion for science. So I thought and thought and thought. What should I do my pro project on? And there came a eureka moment. My desire was to integrate neuroscience, the brain, and robotics, and create a mind-controlled robot, a robot that could one day make a difference in the lives of people with disabilities. I stayed up for hours in my top secret hush-hush biometric laboratory, my garage, <laughs> building a robot for my science fair project. I had to start from square one, because when you decide to think outside of the box, you kind of have to leave the startup manuals inside with it. But I was determined to make my idea work, no matter how long it took me. After countless all-nighters and falling asleep next to my robot, Steve was born. I put the electroencephalogram on my dad, explained to him what he needed to think about in his mind to activate the robot. And Steve moved. Steve actually moved. This eureka moment for me proves to me that anything is possible. Hard work, determination, and perseverance are the ingredients to fulfilling your dreams. That year, I won first place in engineering and best in fair in the Florida State Science and Engineering Fair. I became a Ying Scholar. I was also inducted into the VEX STEM Heroes Hall of Fame. Past recipients have been NASA scientist Dave Lavery, Nobel Physics Prize winner Dr. Osheroff, and other distinguished individuals, such as the inventors of VEX Robotics. Yes, the men who invented the robotics platform I was using. I was grateful, humbled, and honored. I had begun this project not to win awards or be recognized in any way. I just felt the obligation to use something 
I'm both passionate and good at to one day make a difference, even if it ends up just helping one person. The year after that, I was so inspired, I decided to build Dave, the humanoid robotic arm. That year, I won first place in engineering and best in fair in the Florida State Science and Engineering Fair, once again, for the second time in a row. After the competition, I met up with my dad, and I asked him, pinch me, dad. Did this really just happen? I'm not sharing this to brag or show off. On the contrary, it is only to hopefully inspire others that difficulties in life is a vine that bears two truths. You could either buckle down in sorrow and give up, or take the adversity and turn it into something amazing. Take your pick. Because the only way to do good work is to love what you do. Now I'm in high school, and one of my goals is to be a well-balanced and a well-rounded individual. I try to balance my family life, my academics, my robotics, my friends, and my sports. On a side note, I'm a DJ. Yes, a DJ. What intrigues me so much about DJing is my ability to input principles of math and science to my music. I'm testing which two songs harmonize together by calculating the perfect wavelength and frequency the songs must be at in a specific point in time to sound good. Isn't that cool? There's so many ways to approach the field of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. On my robotics team, we have kids on the wrestling team, cheerleaders, members of the marching band. All these kids are so different in their interests but we all find one common ground, the love for robotics. I want to encourage everyone that, you know what? It's cool to be smart, because genius is seeing what everyone else sees and thinking what no one else has thought. Albert St. Georgie. This mindset is so important, because we aren't the future innovators. We are innovators right now, all of you. As we're being exposed to the fields of STEM, on the surface, it may seem as if we're just solving math equations or filling out lab reports, because so what, right? When am I actually going to use this in the future? But no, that's not the case. Everything you are learning right now will give you the power to change the world. I've heard that knowledge is power. Embrace it. Whatever you decide to do, dream big. Never give up and be the best version of yourself. Remember, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Audrey Hepburn. I don't know where robotics will lead me, but I challenge you to embrace engineering, embrace innovation, embrace the idea that what you are learning right now will give you the power to make a difference in the life of someone. I know there have been many advancements in the field of robotics, especially robotic prosthetics, but we must continue dreaming of all the possibilities and persevere. On a final note, I have a friend, a courageous friend, and someone I admire greatly. To everyone in the audience and everyone around the world, I'd like you to meet my friend, Michael. He is a recipient. <laughs> he is a recipient of a robotic leg. Michael is an example of what robotics holds for us in the future. And it has only just begun. Thank you.